Welcome back to Chamber Chat. I'm the hostess of the show, Lauren Grimmick, and the executive director of the Melrose Chamber of Commerce. And as you hopefully know from watching the show many times over, our show is dedicated to our Melrose Chamber of Commerce members. Some are businesses and some are nonprofits. And on this episode, I'm excited to introduce to you, our viewers at home, the Foundation Trust. And so tonight on this episode, I've got two special guests. I've got Dr. Joseph Spinazzola. Welcome. Thank you. And I've got Lauren Lietzow. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you both here. Thank you for uh, being on the show and doing some incredible work, uh, which I feel is behind the scenes and I think people need to know about. So I always start with like my softball question, which is, what is the Foundation Trust? So the Foundation Trust is a private operating foundation. It's a family trust, and it was established in 2017. And we do a range of activities. We do grant making. Yep. in the greater Boston region, kind of concentrating Melrose outward because we're sure. Melrose-based. Uh, we also do outreach and educational resource development in our some of our specialty areas, like working with um, people impacted by trauma and other forms of life adversity. Sure. Uh, yeah. That's good. So it's a newer, a newer organization. Yes, we started up in 2017, so okay. we've just really been getting you're going. Still, yeah, yeah, you're still getting going, which is great. Um, so when I think about who is, you know, you've mentioned like kind of who the organization impacts, but is this the Foundation Trust? Is it just, you know, you two behind the scenes? There are about a half dozen people who work for the Foundation, okay. varying degrees of time. Sure. Um, and we're the primary two on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, there's another, I'm one of the trustees. The workhorses. Yeah, you could say that, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and so tell me a little bit about um, some of the work that you're doing or maybe the, the program areas, I would say that, you know, because I think people think of a foundation, they think maybe it's just this general thing, but there's actually really specific uh, areas of focus. Okay, so we have four primary sort of priority tracks or areas of focus. Sure. Uh, one is, work supporting social service organizations or municipal programs that focus on overcoming trauma and life adversity. Yep. The second track overlaps a little bit. It's for communities and youth and communities that are high risk or underserved. So it could be programming for things like suicide prevention, yep. um, supporting um, immigrant families, supporting LGBTQ youth and young people. Um, so that's the second track. The third track is elder care focused. And the yep. goal there is really to increase um, community engagement and sort of strength-based enrichment opportunities for adults who are living with chronic conditions, whether they're physical, wow. mental, or both. Uh, and the fourth track is um, to advance inclusivity in the arts. So it's an arts and culture sure. track with a real emphasis on supporting emerging voices, and also the intersection of art with the other tracks, so art that addresses trauma and adversity and, and risk communities. Wow, that's incredible. It sounds like you're all, you're, you know, a lot of the focus areas are not necessarily areas that are um, maybe immediately served by other nonprofits or other organizations, right? I always kind of think, you know, being in Melrose or in the surrounding areas, we've got a lot of organizations that are doing really good work in the community. Like I recently had Bread of Life on here, right, from Malden. But so you're, you're really, um, you're, you're touching some really specific focus areas, which is really, really interesting. That's actually a big part of the mission is to support under-resourced um, communities yep. and to support small to medium-sized nonprofits or smaller municipal programs um, that might otherwise kind of fall through the cracks and sure. not be the focus of major right. fundraising campaigns right. and so on. Can you give me some examples of some local programs or things that people watching might be familiar with where you've, you know, helped them, them out? Because like I said, I feel like you're definitely a behind the scenes organization helping all these other organizations that are in front of you. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So this was our first grant cycle yep. this year. And so congratulations. We, thank you. That's super thank you. exciting. Thank you. So this is um, the first round of uh, funding that have gone out to the communities. Um, we've had small gifts and some larger gifts um, prior to That's that. That's great. But here in Melrose, we, we've been focusing not only on giving the funding out, but also working together with some of the organizations on actual programming. And so there are a couple of exciting ones here in Melrose. Sure. Um, one with Follow Your Art, which oh, yep. I know folks 
know yes, and love. We do um, love Follow Your Art. Chris Rodolico is a, an amazing Melrosian and is, has totally taken that organization to a, a wholly different level. So. Absolutely. So in yeah. their new location, then um, we'll yep. be helping them with a couple of different new artists and residents. So an artist, um, an emerging artist that will sure. be creating some new work there. Um, right. And so you're sort of helping them launch you know, from the beginning, right? And that's great. Yeah. It's, it's scholarship it's what they need. Right. And then um, another in Melrose, um, the Melrose Human Rights Commission. Yep. Um, and so we'll be their premier sponsor uh, for wonderful. Pride next year in yep. 2020. And there will also be a new speaker series that we're working with them on. Excellent. So Come so you'll help them to next. be able to introduce this new program or the series to the community right. through your grant funding. That's really great. What is, um, let me kind of take a step back. So we know that it's a newer, you know, organization. It's a family trust. How did it come to of, be? Yeah. How okay. did it even, so even the, evolve? So the grantor uh, that founded it, his name was Dante Dieso. Yep. I knew him my entire life and he passed away in 2017 at the young age of 99. Oh my goodness. And prior to, in the years prior to that, he was planning, he had no children and wanted to establish a foundation that would sort of carry on, you know, service oriented mission and asked me to succeed him as the trustee after he um, passed on. And so we really launched um, after his wow. passing. So he, he really got it started and um, made some initial gifts to Children's Hospital, to a 100-year scholarship to Boston University, wow. um, and then some smaller gifts around the country um, in areas of sort of interest to him, and then really gave me the free reign to establish the priority tracks going forward. Sure, sure. Um, so, But we can count him as sort of the... the he's the, 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 the founder, founder and the, the grantor. Yes, he really and he had, made it happen. It sounded like he had this, you know, in him this sort of like vision, not too specific, but a vision of like wanting to help others, right? He was fortunate enough to, to have, you know, the life that he did up till 99 and, was, and wanted to continue that. Yeah, absolutely. And he was a person who was, you know, very careful with his money and wanted to make every dollar count. Sure. And so that's, a bit, that's been a big focus of ours. A lot of our gifts are, there's been some larger gifts. A lot of our gifts are smaller gifts and we're really trying to, um, leverage those resources where, where they can have the biggest impact. Right, yeah. right. Where do you see, so you've done your kind of first grant cycle. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, it might be throwing you off a little bit, but just from like a, if I'm an organization watching and I'm like, oh my goodness, like what I'm trying to do is a great match to partner with the Foundation yes. Trust. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the process or what do we, where do we even so, start? So, you know? sure. Um, our, our website, uh, in fact, Lauren just updated it yesterday and did a Great. Facebook blast with the instructions for the next cycle. Sure. Um, the grants for the next cycle are due March 5th. Yep. Um, the instructions are on the website. We have, about, we have nine rotating priority catchment communities. Yep. So Melrose was in the first sure. round and we'll cycle back. Yep. Um, and then for 2020, Melrose isn't one of them, but yeah. it's, it's Stoneham, Everett and Chelsea. That's great. But p uh, programs in the, in the other communities can still apply and will be considered based on merit and based on the amount of applications that come in and the availability of funds. So this past year, we had in our 2019 was sort of our catch up year. So we had six communities. Yep. It was a, the, a larger year, um, but we actually gave out awards to almost 17 communities, I think, wow. across the state and a couple out of state. So um, what we're focusing on our priority tracks and then in our yep. catchment areas, but we're open to, you know, considering right. things of merit that come in, especially sure. that align with those priorities and especially where there's interest in um, creating new programming, putting something in place that wasn't there, expanding services. So for some programs, they're offering scholarships to for adults with disabilities to take place or, or children with disabilities sure. to take place in um, art classes or um, equestrian classes, um, other programs, it's literacy programs for recent immigrants and making more spots available um, or per, uh, purchasing equipment, computers, iPads and so on to be able to serve more um, people in those contexts. Sure, yeah. sure. So yeah, I mean, I, I think what you're doing is though is is great because it is nice to 
obviously give back into to the community where you're at, but there is so many needs, right, even beyond Melrose borders. Um, but it sounds like you have a really good sort of plan or strategy for how to make those grants and make those awards, right? You kind of have Definitely. to have that, otherwise Definitely. it could be inundated, right? <laughs> right, and that's stuff. where we have I mean, our how focus. How do you choose, right? Exactly. And the other half as an operating foundation, we created a educational resource website for consumers and family members and multidisciplinary providers called complextrauma.org, which has hundreds of resources that really can be accessed worldwide for people impacted by trauma. Um, regionally, we can do training on trauma and youth violence and certain topics that are within um, our myself and our other faculty sort of area of areas of expertise. So we sure. can. So we're doing some work with local churches to you know education on. Uh, on, on trauma and empowerment based programming, resiliency based programming. So that so we we make grants, but we also can support the those nonprofit organizations through resource development, through training and, and sure. other things. Yeah, and it's a more of like sort of long term or more sustainable way of helping those those organizations as well. Yeah, it's a unique combination, but that allows for the flexibility to kind of be where we need to be. Right, which is nice too, because then you want that flexibility, like you said, whether it's where you want to be or where there's maybe a need that's that's arising in the community. So if, you know, I think a lot of people watching are probably learning about the Foundation Trust for the first time. Um, what do you think, what's there something that you would want people watching to sort of to know about the Foundation? That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, to know that we're here, to know sure. um, about the good work that we're doing. I mean, I've learned so much from the people in the community and just seeing the kindness of the people that are working on these big, important issues. Um, and so... Yeah, it becomes really personal as you're doing it, right? Absolutely. For Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, just check in with what we're doing. We have it all up on our website. Um, a lot of great work being done, um, foundationtrust.org. And, you know, we may at some point need folks to volunteer with us and whatnot. So sure, you know, just reach out and be in touch. And yeah, I would think that there's a lot of people watching who probably, you know, maybe aren't in a, as um, big of a position to, to make contributions or do something like that, but are willing to help or, if, you know, as a nonprofit yourself, if you need supplemental services, like, you know, additional marketing help or web or whatever it is, right? I think, sure. you know, there's people sure. out there who want to give their, their time and their resources to help you guys. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think before we were we were getting going, you said you might ask me oh, a question, yeah, I, I, which would be a first on Chamber Chat, so I'm going <laughs> to allow this to happen here. Yes, I was wondering what your thoughts were on what, why or if it's relevant, useful to have nonprofits as mem we were, g yeah. given that we're new yeah, members, of, members the of the Chamber of Commerce. Sure. Um, what, what do you see as the sort of value or function of nonprofits sure. being part of the Chamber? Yeah, of so I mean, I I think this the the reasons for joining you know any chamber, but Specifically, the Melrose Chamber sort of applies to whether you're um, a business of 11 employees, retailer or restaurant, you're a sole proprietor of one person working out of your home, whether you're a nonprofit. And it's really about, it's the networking and finding, you know, new people in your network, like I just mentioned, to help you grow your organization or your business or um, help you do additional work that you just can't do. Um, it's about getting your name out there. Chamber chats exclusively for <laughs> for chamber members, so it's helping just the community understand, you know, what's available here. Again, whether that's a business, nonprofit organization, um, and I think, you know, in general, I think we as a society are getting away from the kind of personal interaction. Right, we're always on social media, we're always texting, we're always emailing, and I think one thing that's great about the chamber is our events, our conversations, our meetings, things like this. We're able to really connect with people. And I think that um, we need more organizations that help people connect in our day of technology. So awesome. that's what I think about, <laughs> about the chamber, great, but, I'm, great, but I'm biased. Um, well, we'll have to continue our conversation uh, offline because believe it or not, that's that's all we have time for. I told you, I told you <laughs> it would go quick. Um, so the Foundation Trust, I'm sure that you are learned a lot in our quick chamber chat with them, um, but visit their website. Look for more information um, coming out soon about their next um, grant cycle. Um, and stay tuned for more ways that you can get involved and help. Thank you so much for watching and for your support of all of our Melrose Chamber of Commerce members. For now, I'm Lauren Grimmick.